this particular pattern that I'm going to show you today, we are only looking at games in which the pawn has been pushed to d5, not e5, only d5 I'm talking about. And when we try to advance this pawn, usually what happens in normal openings, the knight likes to sit on the c6 square. And whenever we play d5, the knight, the queen's knight basically has three options to move. One is a5, other is e7, and next is b4. There are other two options as well, meaning a7 and b8, but we won't be considering them. Now, usually what we try to understand is that uh, when you play d5, the theory goes like this, or it's not a theory, it's basically understanding. And it is like this, that when you play d5, and if the knight stays on the queen side, even if it is staying on the e7 square or b4 square or a5 square, the knight is a bad piece. And it is going to be a bad piece throughout the game. Okay, it can't become a good piece. It is going to be a bad piece throughout the game. And today I'll just try to show you by various examples, how can we play against this knight? Because the knight is going to be a bad piece, the idea is that black will be playing a piece down because this knight will not never be involved in the game. Now, if you play it wrongly, like suppose if you try to put your knight on c4 or knight on b3, automatically you are giving them the knight and you are saying that, okay, please take me. And now you have to understand that, okay, currently the knight wants to sit on the c4 square, but after coming on c4, it won't be having much possibility. So this game was played by Mikhail Tal. I'll show you multiple examples today. But remember, the main idea is that if the a5 knight, e7 knight, or b4 knight has no further jumping squares, in the case of d5 pawn, by the way, only in the case of d5 pawn, I'm saying no other case, then the knight is a bad piece. Now here, Tal was playing with the white pieces, and he starts with one c4. And after c4, the knight takes queen to d3, attacking the pawn. Knight goes back, queen to a6. And suddenly we realize that uh, the problem of the knight is now coming in more in, in the picture because the knight is again one of the underprotected pieces. It's been attacked once, defended once, and the knight again has no particular squares to move. So bishop c8, queen a7, rook e7, queen a8, queen c7, knight coming to b3. Now there are many other ways to play this. But in general, what you should realize that because the a5 knight is going to be fixed, how should we proceed as white? So if I go back a few moves, now every game has different ideas. See, if the knight is fixed on the a5 square, the other idea can be to open up the center or attack on the king side. That is one of the ideas. But in this case, we know that if I try to open up the king side, the knight can jump on c4. So not in this case, we'll try to open up c4. First of all, we'll make sure that, okay, this is a isolated pawn, so white can take advantage of it. But usually what happens that if the knight is sitting on the a5 square, the idea is that if you start attacking on the other side of the board, the knight is not able to participate. If those who have done the class of last Monday should understand that bishop was acting like a billiard ball, right? And if the bishop was stuck on one of the sides, and the moment we started launching attack on the other side, the bishop was not able to participate in the game. Same is the case with the knight. So I won't say knight is acting like a billiard ball because that's not how the knight moves. But basically, you have to understand it is not working every time. It works only when you are having a pawn on d5. Now, a pawn on d5 can come in many, many openings. So that's why when you're understanding middle games, uh, it is also important to understand middle game similarities between different openings. Like suppose if I go for some d4 lines, and if I start the game by d4, they go knight here, I go c4, they go here, I go d5. Now I can realize that, okay, in the Benoni defense, the pawn is going to d5. Fine. What are the other openings? We go here, g6, here, bishop g7, e4, d6, knight out, sometimes the knight comes out, bishop e2, castles, or many times they play after castles, h3, e5, d5. So again, you realize that 
this particular structure, the particular pawn structure of pawn D5 and supported by these two pawns is coming in many, many D4 openings. Now, it can also come in E4 opening, especially in Royal Opus. So we go E4, E5, and we go for the Spanish. We go A, sorry, we go for A6, it should be put E5 here, knight out. We can go D3, we can go D6, castles, we should be 7, C3, knight A5, we should keep two. Uh, C5, uh, we can go D4, castles, D5. And again, we realize that this particular thing is also changing from, it is not like it's only restricted to D4 openings. It can also come in the E4 lines as well. Now, let's see example by example. So here, Tal was playing with the white pieces and he went for this line. And later on, when the game proceeded, we can realize that this knight not has much squares. And because, because of the pawn on a6, they, they can do nothing here because they have to just keep waiting. And Tal little, later improved the position like this, brought the bishop out, and this knight was not able to participate. And the a7 pawn was a winning pawn. Now, I'm not going to show you the full game in any case because I'm having at least seven, eight examples to show. So we won't be getting enough time. But you will be getting these positions to practice. So you can see that if you're not allowing the knight, knight to come in the game, then you are kind of playing a decent game. Example number two is this. Again, we can see that we are having a pawn on d5 and the b7 knight is also a bad knight because it has no jumping squares. And we can again realize that the pawn on e6 is a backward pawn. So white has many, many options here to start with. White can start with g4. White can start with king f1. Or white can even try for tricks, going for knight to a3. And the idea is I want to go for knight to b5. And after takes, we have queen. Something like this. We go b5, takes, and the knight has no squares to move. So this is a problem. When you are taking a square on d5 with your pawn, you basically control c6 at the same time you not allow much of the squares to be present for black on the D file. So this is a very important yet very easily missed fundamental. That is why, suppose if I show you another opening, if I show you a D4, knight F6, C4, uh, C5 here, this, that, this is one of the game, like ways to play Benoni. And the idea is that what they do is, Bishop e7, Bishop d3, knight d7. Now, they already know. See, if you're learning openings from any side, you should also understand the deeper meaning. What they do is they start doing knight d7. You play knight f3. They go knight f8 without even castling. You castle and then they play knight 2 g6. Because if they, if, if you don't understand why this maneuvering is done, because you know what people will do, if they're trying to learn this opening from black, they will just try to memorize this maneuver. But what is the logic of this maneuver? Why the knight cannot just stay on here and come back? Because of the same problem. When the pawn is on d5, if you are putting a knight on the queen side, that is going to be a bad piece in the middle game. Throughout the middle game, does not matter if, even if it comes to b4 because it has no coming back on this square. If the knight can come back on c6 and go back to d4, then it's a good knight. But that's why you know you, people rarely play knight a6. And that's why they do this kind of maneuver. And then they cast. Because now suddenly then there's no knight on the queen side. And they're happy with this. Going back to the point, whatever they do, we can just take it. Sir, and... I didn't get you. Yeah, sorry, which part? I didn't get you. Like when you say the, the maneuvering part, I didn't get you. Why, why should they play a6? They should not play a6. That's what I'm saying. They should not play a6 because that's what I'm saying. In the D, in the case of d5 pawn, if you're having a pawn on d5 from white, the queen's knight is going to be a bad piece. So the game. It's the Benoni, right? In any opening, does not it is Benoni defense, old Benoni we say. But in any opening, if the pawn is on d5, your queen's knight is going to be a bad piece throughout the game. So that's why Black decides to bring it on the king side. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. Yeah, because of sir, I've seen one game by Gary Kasparvo in this like this one. Gary Karpavo versus uh, Anitali Karpavo. And he was maneuvering like this? Yeah, he was maneuvering like this. Next example is this. 
again we see a different kind of opening there's a bishop on g7 so probably it must be again one of the examples from benoni it can also come from king's indian defense and here i'll show you another idea that because the knight is sitting on a5 it is not able to participate in the game and because the queen side is totally closed white decides to launch the attack on the king side takes queen takes f4 and this these kind of you know these kind of ideas are very important to understand so f4 queen h3 rook f3 same idea and king g2 takes rook takes back back and now white is just trying to slowly slowly improvise the game takes takes f6 happened queen c2 king g7 rook e1 queen back rook h1 queen back rook e2 and the game is already about to go in a bad shape because black is only maneuvering with the queen black rook is out of the game this rook might not participate much but now i can just claim the file very quickly queen c3 queen d1 rook h1 rook e1 and rook e8 was played and the game was lost after rook c2 the queen is trapped so this was one of the games but uh, it's important to realize that uh, throughout the game all the pieces were moving from white but only the queen was moving from black and the knight was not even moving at all this is one of the important things to take note of all right now in the chat can you guys tell me which knight from black is a bad knight in the chat only personally to me which knight from black is a bad knight yes so basically we say the e7 knight is a bad knight because it must be on c6 and after d5 it has gone to e7 and because e7 knight is a bad knight they try to improve this knight further in the game probably by playing something like g5 but uh we don't want to give them enough time to achieve this knight they like to make them come back in the game the moment we do that the knight is decent and the game will be more equal so what white starts doing white just focuses on other aspects of imbalance white starts noticing that okay this pawn can become a weakness right now this is guarding but we can attack and take and this becomes a bad backward pawn so white has many other choices here by the way white can play f3 to just control e4 white can if white wants to be aggressive white can go knight to c4 now here the see every move has some good parts some bad parts the good part of this is white is focusing on attacking on the d6 weakness but the bad part is white is forced to exchange white's good bishop for black's useful bishop which is fine i guess i have already taken a class in which i have told that a good bishop can be exchanged for useful bishops there are some times in which good bishop can be exchanged so here even if they take the game can go on because after takes we are having a good control on the queen side and we are again focusing on the same idea f3 and knight e5 now here again you'll realize that this knight this particular knight is not able to participate in the game and white has a lot of mobility with the knight just in this case never ever try to play knight to c6 because you are helping black in order to exchange your knight with their knight so you should never because even though it looks like c6 is the whole you have to understand your knight is much much powerful than blacks so black will be happy after exchange of uh, knights here you can you can focus on other aspects like bishop c4 trying to take advantage of this diagonal maybe there are there are there are more aspects to this particular position their knight can also jump to b5 one of the holes kind of a hole and bishop can jump to c4 but don't just play knight to c6 kind of moves so this is one thing uh if they try to go back to protect the pawn fine the spring pieces and you will realize that this knight because of this knight not able to move the queen is actually fixed and the rooks are not getting connected just because of one piece if you are having a space advantage uh the full position starts getting more and more cramped so it takes takes king g7 bishop here and now this is a kind of a useful bishop but still if given a chance i can trade here knight f6 come back and again you will realize that the game will still progress but this knight is not able to participate so again i'm not saying this is like directly winning position it's like one of those positions in which you will always want to play as white 
because white would be very, very comfortable playing this position slow and steady. Now, every position that I'm showing you today, you'll be getting in your uh, WhatsApp as assignments. So if you are having any ideas that you want to try, just hear me out today so that I can explain more and more positions and then you can try it out on your own and see if you were able to take advantage of uh, the bad nights. Now in this case, everyone in the chat personally to me, which night is a bad night from black? Now you guys are noticing that the B4 night is actually the problem. Why the B4 night is the problem? Because the C6 uh, night- Sir, has, because the B4 night can't yeah. move anywhere. And it is still the case of this particular D5 pawn controlling the C6 square. Now, again, I'll show you how the game can proceed. So basically, uh, they have played A6 and white can come back with bishop E2. But because this is a useful bishop, not a good bishop for white, so white decides to just trade, trade. And as I said before, that you can take the idea, take the hint that because this knight is stuck on the uh, queen side and opponent's king has not even castled, so white directly decides to open up the game by playing f5. Trying to open up the rook. And even after the castle, bishop g5, pawn f6, bishop f4, and the point is there's a lot of weak points that uh, white has created. This is a permanent hole for white. And after takes, bishop b6, bishop a4 takes, takes. The point is that uh, now you can realize that there are so many weaknesses because whenever the pawn structure becomes messy, there are a lot of holes, weak squares that get created. And here we have to just bring the knights on the, like bring more and more pieces on the king side to finish it off. White plays this particular position with knight h4, hoping to go knight f5, takes knight f5, sitting on a hole, queen goes back, Knight takes, King H8, and now the idea is very, very simple to bring pieces and jump on the king. So this is another very important fundamental to understand that how can you switch the attack just because of one of the piece of black being a kind of a stuck piece. So even though it looks like that this knight is participating, but it's not really doing anything. But I'll show you also how people don't understand this important point and they mess up the position. See, remember I said that if you allow this knight to come on d4, suddenly this knight is a good knight. So suppose if something, if I if I show you some moves and uh, you play something like rook to b1, just, just to give you some perspective and you decide to go like this and the knight c2 played, queen g3, knight d4, now suddenly, I will not say that the d4 knight is a bad knight at all because now it's sitting on a good hole and it is able to centralize itself. So it's very important to realize that if you allow the same knight to jump d4 square, even though you take it, that does not matter. Even though you take it, black is very happy with the position. So it's important to understand few details. It's important to think what your opponent wants from a position. And then one, the moment you realize what opponent wants from a position, you try to stop, you know, some, something like prophylactic thinking, it's called prophylactic thinking. Now, suppose if black plays pawn to b5, in the chat, everyone white to play. This knight is already a bad knight. We have already understood. It's white to play. In the chat, person to me. Remember, this is a bad knight. So playing knight e6 right now does not make much sense. Because after knight e6, uh, takes queen g4 and back takes queen g7. The point is, I want to go for the end game. And now the knight that was there on the board has gone away. So black is happy with this kind of uh, game. Even though you are plus one currently, you are going to kind of have to deal with this and it's more likely to end in a draw because if the queen gets exchanged, suddenly the isolated pawn on e6 becomes a weakness. So knight e6 right now is not the best move. 
Uh, also H3 going for a move like H3 there, Queen H5. Again, the point is, it's not like you have to rush things, you know, try to try to go for very quick attack on their side because I can still try queen to g7. Now you are also having some weaknesses to deal with. Playing a move like b4 again, remember what I have said, the main idea of the class was how do you play against the c7 knight? So if you play b4, again, it's not helping uh, white. Queen to b3, again, the main idea is I can trade and if you trade by rook or by the queen, first of all, if you take by rook, then I can play, uh, I guess, probably something like uh, maybe queen to b5, trying to exchange and bring the knight. And the moment knight comes on b5, it will be coming on d4. And the moment knight comes on d4, it's a good knight. I don't think so, queen b3, just, just b3, just b3. Because after takes, takes, the pressure is still there. There's no jumping for the knight. They can try to go on a6. The moment they do that, thumb, then you enter on a6 with this idea. And the knight is going to stay there forever. Similarly, I'll show you one difference now. Very, very small difference. Because in this case, the move was b3 after b5. Because they want to go for b5. Because the moment you take, they want to, you know, just bring the knight in the game. But if I show you another position, the same position and now they go b5. Now I cannot go b3 because rook is hanging. So now the difference is you cannot go b3. So now white can play after trade, bishop here, back, back. And if you try to do this, the game will go on. But if they, uh, after bishop e5, if you now try to go for knight e6, now it's acceptable because you know that this knight is going to eventually come back in the game, which cannot be stopped. So now exchanging knight with this particular idea of queen e4 is something that can be done. Now you can go for this kind of a game, which is a very equal game, by the way. The game will likely to be ending in a draw. But uh, not knight e6 when the rook is not pinned. Like suppose if I go back in this situation, now you don't, after pawn b5, you, you are not forced to reply by knight e6 here. You can just play b3 because there's no attack. On the rook and now after take take the game will go on and you can play this position in a much much better way as compared to uh this position in which you are forced to go for 96 line and this position is you're like okay no one is trying anything you're having a bishop and rook they are having the same thing a couple of pawns so Always look for opportunities, you know. Always think what is your opponent's plan? Why will they go for a move like b5? What are their intentions? The moment you realize that their knight is a bad piece because we are having a pawn on d5, the moment you understand their intentions, you'll just try to stop that. A very normal, quiet move like b3. Next, uh, I'll show you one game uh, with the same similar idea. And the game is from, so in Royal Lopez, you go bishop b5, a6 back, knight out, b3, these are all standard moves, c3, knight a5, bishop c2, c5, knight f1, knight g3, d4, h6 is not the best, and d5. And the point is, if I turn the turn the database, if I show you the database in this particular position, the moment white achieves d5, all the games that are played in a serious tournament are won by white. Every single game. There's not a single game that is won by black. I mean, as per the leeches database, leeches only. These are our, uh, those, na, you know, uh, like grandmasters. Right? So, yeah. what about the non grandmaster leeches? Then like uh, I have not checked on leeches basically. So, leeches has because it has bullet and blitz, so cannot say much. But yeah, but you can check. Can, uh, you can remove blitz. Yeah, remove. more I can see white. See the, again, there's let's database. Only two games have been won by black. More are won by white. So the point is, it's a very common position, and the idea is you just don't allow the knight to come back in the game. Now see how does white black white plays. 
B3, not a mine C4. Found history. Very slow progress. No need to rush. B3, C6, should be three. So C1, looking at one. And now the moment we open up the file, because this idea of playing F4, I have showed you already in the two positions, right? When the opponent's knight is fixed on the queen side and it has no time to come back in the game, we can always advance F4 and try to open up the opponent's king side. Takes, takes, here, and suddenly the game shifts See, very quickly. The moment black pieces are shifted to the queen side, the game shifts on the king side, and after a few moves, Okay, now the main idea is it's a bit complicated. Knight is hanging, otherwise, if knight moves, this is gone. So it's protected. Knight d6. The point is we are going for b5, fork. There are many other moves to play this, yes, Krishna. So when you play like knight or so. Knight hash, yeah, there are many moves. Yeah, like this is completely winning. You can start by other moves as well. Like uh, you can also go for knight h4. Yeah, but for a second. Looks like even queen x6 is winning. Anything is anything. So can you, you can go back for a second, sir. Yeah. Just a few moves. Even more bit. Uh, you play knight h5. Knight h5. Five. Like this. So when you. No, before I think you play. Yeah. Yeah. Why yeah. can't you just take? You tell me why can't you? So I'm supposed to. Oh, it's okay. Oh. So. You are going in a rush, so I didn't see that. All right. So, again, not showing full game. White is already plus two. White will be winning the game. Okay, but you just question. understand the main ideas. Because, you know, every single time that you will be trying to play against the b6 or the queen side knight, your ideas will be a bit different. But the common theme remains the same, that you make sure that the opponent's knight is fixed on the queen side in this kind of structure, and then you play f4. This is one of the common ideas. But if the knight shifts on e7, maybe not f4 will work then. Because, yeah, you know, because the knight, if it is sitting on e7, it can come on the king side very quickly. So then you have to not play f4 directly. But if it is fixed on a5 or if it is fixed on b6, b7, maybe c7, if it cannot come to king side, fine, open it up. But if the knight is sitting on e7, you cannot just play this because the moment you achieve f5, the knight is there to take care of it. So these are small differences between positions. Now, this game is from b4. Focus on where? Abenoni. e5, e5, knight, there, and knight a6. Now, 96 is not a good move. We control the B4 square and very slow progress. Now, I don't want to play bishop to E2 or D3 because the point is this is a chain of light square pawn chain. So, even if you put the bishop on D3, it's going to be a bad bishop. So, you want to keep it outside the pawn chain. So, if you go here or here, that, that's fine. Or if you go here or here, that is also fine. Bishop D2 is also fine because later white hopes for playing F4. Queen, Bishop e3, Queen d2, b5, takes, 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 look fc1, and Queen to e7. After Queen e7, the point is that uh, this knight again has not much squares to come in the game, and it can go here, but it cannot come on f6. If it tries to come on f6, we always have h4 ideas. Bishop is three because this is a light square pawn chain. So you want the bishop to be outside. B4 takes six. Rook a3 going for the isolated pawn. G6, h5. And now, uh, if I see that, okay, there's some pressure and they would love to take it. So you always try to go for g4. Can we push like before this? Yeah, yeah. You can you, like right away. No, I don't recommend to push right away, otherwise, that is five is fine. First G4, then you push. Knight 
And again, it's like, it's not completely winning, but it is better for white because uh, white has a lot of pulls. Like you can always control it. And later on, we will always try to put some pressure so the bishop cannot really move back. And because the bishop cannot move, my bishop is acting like a good bishop. So if they try to attack, I will take queen trade and then rook a6 is falling. So these are small, small things in which you gain edge in the position. You know, just by knowing that how will, uh, when, when you play a certain pawn structure, which piece you have to play against. Like in this particular, all these cases, we are playing against the knight. Even though if you look right now, the knight has no space to become active. It cannot go g7, f6, cannot go, it can go c7, but again, no future because the bishop cannot move because already there is a weakness. So these are small, small things that you guys have to understand uh, while playing a certain pawn structure. I hope this is clear till now. Now I'm, now I'm going to take some questions. If you were having any questions, you can tell me one by one raising the hands.